Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 30th of October. Police probes bomb blast that killed two in India's Kerala. Jay Shankar meets family members of Navy officers on death row in Qatar ashores action. And Bangladesh opposition protest turns violent amid calls for PM to resign. And now for all the details. Police in India's Kerala has intensified probe and have been questioning a man claiming to be a former member of the Jehovah's Witnesses about his alleged involvement in setting off homemade bombs at a meeting of the group on Sunday that killed two women and injured dozens of people. The suspect, Dominic Martin, posted a video on Facebook claiming responsibility before surrendering. He said he believed the teachings of the group were anti-national about six years ago and that he had tried to talk on them about changing their views. Jehovah's Witnesses, which has about 60,000 followers in India, is an international Christian denomination that was founded in the U.S. around 1870. They're best known in many countries for door-to-door -door evangelism. And days after the Qatar government announced death penalties to eight former Indian Navy officers, India's Foreign Minister S. Day Shankar on Monday met their family members and said the government will make all the efforts to secure their release. Taking to X, Day Shankar said the government is pursuing the efforts with utmost importance and he shared the pain of the families. The meeting comes after the family members expressed their concerns and demanded immediate intervention by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Navy personnel were arrested by Qatar's intelligence agency in 2022 in an alleged case of espionage, but the charges against them were not officially disclosed by either New Delhi or Doha. Moving on, Pakistan's caretaker government has approved 8 billion rupee financing proposal for national carrier Pakistan International Airlines to meet its debt payment obligations. In a statement, the finance ministry said based on the proposal of aviation division, the ministry had approved the bridge financing which will be made available through the resources of the country's civil aviation authority. The PIA had cancelled 349 flights in the last two weeks due to a shortage of fuel supplies which have affected both domestic and international routes. The airline has accumulated billions of dollars in losses. The government had earlier announced it would prioritize PIA as part of a financial discipline plan agreed for IMF bailout. And moving on, situation remained tense in Bangladesh on Monday after a protest rally by BNP, the main opposition party turned violent this past weekend. A police officer was killed while 100 others, including law enforcement officials and journalists, were reportedly injured in the opposition protest on Saturday, where thousands of BNP supporters had gathered, demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. A day-long countrywide strike was called by BNP on Sunday, which saw miscreants torching several public transportation and arrest of party cadre. <laughs> Well, Prime Minister Hasina had maintained a tight control since coming to power in 2009 and has been accused of authoritarianism, rights violations, cracking down on free speech by Western governments. Opposition BNP, which itself is in disarray after conviction of its supremo Khalid Azia, has been demanding a free and fair election under a caretaker government, asking Hasina to relinquish power. And amid the Israel-Hamas conflict, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres arrived in Nepal on Sunday for a four-day visit with an agenda which includes climate change and Nepal's peace process. Though not directly involved, Nepal has been affected by the conflict as 10 Nepali students were killed in attacks by Hamas in Israel and one is still missing. The UN chief met PM Pushpa Kamal Dehel and offered condolences to the families of the Nepali nationals killed in the attacks. 
In a press briefing, he called for immediate release of hostages in Gaza and a humanitarian ceasefire as aid supplies to the Palestinian enclave remain choked. And I will continue to insist on the immediate and unconditional release of all the hostages in Gaza. And I repeat my utter condemnation of the appalling attacks perpetrated by Hamas. There is no justification ever for the killing, injuring and abduction of civilians. The situation in Gaza is growing more desperate by the hour. I regret that instead of a critically needed humanitarian pause supported by the international community, Israel has intensified its military operations. And as the big day news for the swearing-in ceremony of President-elect Mohammad Moizi, the incoming head of state of Maldives, has intensified his call of Indian military's removal. In an interview with Reuters, Moizi said Maldives will work to return Indian military personnel from its shores as soon as possible, adding that a frank and detailed diplomatic discussion will be held with India to work out the detail. The focus is not on the actual number of military personnel, it is on not having any at all in Maldives, he was quoted as saying by the news agency. India, which has long-standing cultural, financial and security ties with Maldives, denies the allegation of establishing a military presence in the islands. In recent years, New Delhi has also invested millions of dollars in infrastructure following the incumbent president Ibrahim Soli's agenda of India first. However, Moise is backed by a coalition known to be close to China, which had championed India out campaign. And thousands of Sikh devotees in India on Monday celebrated the birth anniversary of their fourth spiritual leader, Guru Ram Das, with prayers and a holy dip at the famous Golden Temple. Take a look. Thousands of devotees offered prayers and took holy dip at the famous Golden Temple in India's Amritsar city on Monday to mark the 489th birth anniversary of Guru Ram Das, the fourth Sikh spiritual leader. The devotees celebrated the occasion by listening to singing of sacred hymns inside the revered Sikh place of worship and pondered upon the teachings of the spiritual leader known for his humility, service and deep devotion. Guru Ram Das, who was born in 1534 AD, is believed to be the founder of Ramdaspur, which later came to be known as Amritsar. He also composed 638 hymns in 30 classical ragas or musical modes. स्थान को बनाया जहां की हर चार दरवाजे हैं चार दिशाओं से चारे वर्णों से लोग जहां आ सकते हैं तो सभी को यहां नवाजा जाता है ये गुरु रामदास पाशा की कृपा है तो आज के प्रकाश पर पे समुची संगत को लख लख मुबारकबाद Majority of India's Sikh population, which forms 2% of more than 1 billion population, resides in northern India, particularly in the state of Punjab and in national capital, New Delhi. Today, Guru Ramdas Ji's birthday, and we have made an urgent plan, and we have done it, and we are going to do it. What are you doing? बहुत रोना क्या जी बहुत भीड़ है मैंने एक्चुअली ऐसी भीड़ अपनी लाइफ में अभी तक देखी नहीं जितना नॉर्मल क्राउड होता है उससे करीबन दस गुना ज़्यादा भीड़ है आज। Well that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India, breaking news and views from India.